guys, we are in the Kilimanjaro Safaris. Here are all the animals we can see today. Swahili. My name is Lowell and I'll be your safari driver for the next two weeks. Now while we're out here on the Barambe Wildlife Reserve, I ask that you please remain seated at all times. As you can probably tell already, the road is really bumpy out here. For the same reasons, these hang on tight to the cameras, hats, glasses, cell phones, wallets, children, purses, and other loose articles, as I'm not allowed to stop for anything that goes overboard. Also, please refrain from leaning out these windows. A lot of the plants around here have long, sharp thorns, and I really don't want anyone to get stuck. Now, that gray animal on our right-hand side is a greater kudu. The brown animals with the horns are bongo, and that striped-legged animal across the river from us on our right is an okapi. Bongo are also known as the ghosts of the forest, due to their rare and elusive nature. And both male and female bongo have long horns. There's another two greater kudu on the hill ahead of us. Greater kudu have long, cup-shaped ears. And they rely a lot more on their sense of hearing than sight for survival. If you look up on this ridge, high up by the clay wall, that is a black rhino eating from all that hay. Way over there. Black rhino are the smaller rhino species. They weigh about 3,000 pounds. Or white rhino one. weigh 5,000 pounds. There's another one resting below the behind the log here on our left. Although they have no natural predators, they've been hunted almost to extinction for their horns. It's because some people believe rhino horns have mystical healing properties, which just is not true. Rhino horns are made of the same material as our fingernails. We are now entering the territory of the most dangerous land animal in all of Africa. The most dangerous land animal in the world, actually. Anybody here to guess? That's right, it's the hippopotamus. The hippopotamus weighs 5,000 pounds. They can run at speeds of 20 miles per hour. And they have 18 inch long, razor sharp teeth. They're fierce and territorial. They'll attack just about anything that gets too close. But don't worry, we're perfectly safe in this big truck. The hippo can hold their breath underwater for eight minutes at a time. They can even sleep underwater. That's a whole bloat of hippo on the left. A bloat meaning a family of hippo. Now these big white birds are pink-backed pelican. Named for the bright pink coloration they get during their mating season. The hippo don't swim, they actually walk along the river bottom. And sometimes you'll hear a hippo making a deep, throaty, chuckling noise called a wheeze honk. On our left hand side, these are Nile crocodile. Nile crocodile are the largest species of crocodile in all of Africa. They get about 16 feet long. Although their diet consists mostly of fish, they will attack just about anything that gets too close to them. Even bigger animals like zebra if they happen to wander in the water. 
Now, Crocodile has extremely powerful jaw closing muscles. Very weak jaw opening muscles. Even a human is perfectly capable of holding a crocodile's mouth closed. Now, on our right hand side, this is a baobab tree, also known as an upside down tree named for the fact that its branches are leafless for about nine months of the year, making them look like large, skyward-facing roots. This is mainly to help these trees conserve water, which they store in their trunks during the dry seasons. We are now entering the savanna. The savanna is a grassland that extends for hundreds of miles across Central Africa. It's home to some of Harambe's more famous animal species, such as elephant, giraffe, even lion. There's a giraffe and a baby giraffe on our right hand side. That little baby giraffe is about two months old and about six feet tall. You can also see some white bearded wildebeest over there lying down just by that pile of branches. White bearded wildebeest are also known as new, spelled G N U. And they travel in herds of up to 5,000 to 10,000, making them the biggest herds out of any land animal on earth. Those little golden animals on our right with the white bellies are springbok. Springbok are named for their ability to spring or leap high into the air. They can jump six feet vertically or 13 feet horizontally. These are painted dogs on our left by the bushes. Painted dogs are the most successful. Oh, please remain seated. Painted dogs are the. Uh, that goes for children too. Painted dog are the most successful. Pa okay, I'm driving away then. Wow! Due to nature of the, some of these animals, if I have people standing, I actually have to leave. No standing. Unfortunately, I did warn you guys a couple times. Now these are sable antelope on our left. Sable antelope have long, backwards curved horns that help discourage predators from jumping onto their backs. So on our right and our left, these are termite mounds. Termite mounds are as hard as cement, even though they're really just made of clay, mud, dung, and well, termite spit. Now here are the springbok, these little golden animals. Springbok are one of the top 10 fastest animals in the world, capable of running 50 miles per hour. They're only sprinters though, so they can't maintain that speed very long. warning cries. This way if one animal spots a predator and gives a cry of alarm, other animals will recognize that call and know to be on high alert. And this way they all work together for their mutual survival. Ahead of us and on our left are some Maasai giraffe. Now Maasai means messy. Because these giraffe have a messy spot pattern that isn't as neat or tidy looking as the spot patterns on reticulated giraffe, which you guys are probably more used to seeing in books or on television. All giraffe are the tallest land animals in the world, standing at 18 to 20 feet tall. And they have three foot long tongues. That's about the length of my whole arm. Giraffe only need to sleep for 30 minutes a day. And they can sleep either standing up or sitting down. Almost never lying down, as that would make them way too vulnerable to predators. 
A family of giraffe is known as a tower. These brown animals on our right are in holy cattle. Also known as Watusi cattle. Wow! Named for the Watusi tribe that originally existed. Both male and female in holy cattle have long horns. Their horns are hollow and mostly honeycombed on the inside. They're filled with blood vessels that better let them control their own body temperatures on hot days. Kind of like having their own built-in air conditioning. On our left hand side are some mandrel monkeys. Mandrel are the largest species of monkey in the world. They weigh about a hundred pounds. And they have bright blue faces. They get bluer as they get excited. You can see them on the rocks and under the tree line here. Mandrel are also one of only two species of animal that'll bare their fangs when they're happy. Can anybody name the other animal? It's humans when we smile. Uh oh. Looks like the road is closed. Well, not to worry everybody. I see a bit of a detour up ahead. We'll just go that way. Also, there's an African elephant on our right. African elephants weigh about 13,000 pounds on average, and they have more muscles in their trunks than we have in our whole bodies. All the way to the right. See you there, Abby? I've never taken this particular detour before, but hopefully it won't cut our two week safari too short. Oh, this bridge has definitely seen better days. But I don't have room to U turn, so. Let's just cross slowly. Don't mind the creaking noise. The creaking noise is very normal to bridges around here. This is that. So is this! It's wow. also normal! Don't panic, I'm doing it for you! <laughs> See, uh, nothing to worry about. I wasn't internally screaming at all. Looks like we just arrived at the red clay pits. So the detour couldn't have taken us too far off course. You see these big gash marks on our right? Those are tusk marks. Elephants will use the, will file down their tusks on clay walls like this in the same way that we humans file our fingernails. Looks like we are in just a little bit of traffic. There might be an animal on the road up ahead, is, is usually what's going on. Now, I could tell that was a bull elephant, that elephant we passed, a male, because he was all by himself. A male elephant spend most of their lives either alone or in small bachelor groups. They only ever return to the herd in order to mate. So whenever you see a large herd of elephants, they're almost always made up entirely of females and children. Male elephants usually leave the herd at about 13 years old. The elephants are a matriarchy. That means they're ruled by a dominant female that is all of the thinking and decision making for the herd. She's known as the matriarch. And she's usually the oldest and wisest elephant. Not necessarily the biggest. Now here in Africa, we've been having a lot of problems with elephants wandering on a farmer's land and eating their crops. This is bad for the farmers, obviously, but it's also quite dangerous for the elephants, as we never want them to be that close to humans. Mostly because humans are the most dangerous thing an elephant can ever encounter. But here at the Harambe Wildlife Reserve, we actually learned by watching the elephants that live right here that elephants are very afraid of bees. Weird, right? 
And as soon as we learned this, we started to tell all of the farmers out here in Africa, and they've since begun building beehives on the edge of their farmlands, which scares the elephants away, but keeps them safe. It also supplies the farmers with another source of income from selling the honey. So it's a rare win-win for both. And like I said, that was the Disney Wildlife Conservation Program that made that discovery. Now, elephants are very social animals. They actually talk to each other all the time. But they only make about three noises that we humans can hear. The rest of the sounds elephants make are simply beyond our range of hearing. In the same way that you and I can't hear radio signals. Elephants have very sensitive skin. They can actually get sunburns just like we can. So what they'll do is they'll gather up clay and mud and they'll lather it on their backs to use like sunscreen. No? By the baobab tree on our left hand side is a baby elephant. See the little baby in the back there? That baby elephant is about 1,800 pounds and about a year and a half old. She won't grow her tusks until she's about six years old. You can still see an elephant over by this watering hole here. Elephants can fit up to five gallons directly from their trunks though. They're not as strong and they don't actually connect to their stomach. So what elephants will do is they'll hold their trunks up to their mouths and then they'll just shoot the water from their trunk back out into their mouth. Kind of like drinking out of a spray bottle. These are greater flamingo on our left. Greater flamingo are the lightest pink of all the flamingo species. They get their pink color from a protein called beta carotene, which is found in the shrimp that they eat. Whenever you see a flamingo standing on one leg, they're really just giving their leg a break. They're very light birds, and they really only need to stand on one leg at a time. They can even sleep that way. A flock of flamingo is known as a flamboyance. Inside, you can see where the wardens confiscated some horns, tusks, and ivory. It's a sad truth here in Africa that as many as 96 elephants are killed by poaching every single day. Their numbers have dropped by about 20% in the last 10 years alone. We've now entered bush country, home to a lot of large grazing animals. But it's also home to a lot of large predators. They like to use the bushes and brush around here to help them sneak up on their prey. Animals can appear from anywhere at any time, everyone. So keep your eyes open. Most of the animals out here have horns, and the main difference between horns and antlers is that antlers can be shed or broken off and they'll grow right back, 
whereas horns are directly connected to an animal's skull by their veins or blood vessels. There's no safe way to remove an animal's horns without critically injuring them. I see a cheetah up ahead on our left. Do you see the tufts of gold under the tree line? You can see one of them's moving her tail. There's two of them. Cheetah are the fastest land animal in the world. They can run 60 miles per hour. They're only sprinters though, so they can't maintain that speed for very long before they have to stop and take a break. Now cheetah are completely silent animals. They don't roar, they don't meow, they don't make any noise at all. Their throat and lungs just aren't set up correctly for that. Cheetah are also very shy animals and kind of skittish. They won't go near other animals that are larger than them. And they're easily chased off even by smaller predators like hyena. This big rock formation here is called a kopi. Kopi are favorite hangouts of big predators like lion. They like to use them to survey the savannah in search of prey. Now lions spend most of their day either sleeping or resting. On our left hand side there you can see a big old lion right on the rocks. A lion's roar can be heard up to five miles away. That's almost as loud as thunder. Contrary to popular belief, it is the female lion that do all the hunting. Male lion usually just stay home and guard the cubs. They're like stay-at-home dads. Lion are also the only big cat that hunts as a group. Other big cats like tiger and panther are solitary hunters. There's some zebra and some white rhino on the right hand side. No two zebra stripes are the same. They're all different, much like our fingerprints in that regard. There are two female lion up there, one of which is awake. A zebra can kick with enough force to break a predator's jaw. <laughs> On our left hand side are some warthog. Warthog are a large burrowing relative of the pig. They use their big front tusks to dig holes while their back tusks are razor sharp and used to defend themselves against predators. Now these are white rhino, a larger rhino species. White rhino weigh about 5,000 pounds and they can charge at speeds of 35 miles per hour. They have two inch thick skin like a layer of body armor, and although they have very poor eyesight, they have an extremely keen sense of hearing and smell. Now black rhino and white rhino are actually the exact same skin color. They're both gray. They get their name from a mispronunciation of an African word, fight, which means wide lip. So actually, they are the wide lipped rhino. On our right hand side, these are yellow billed stork. Yellow billed stork are carrion birds. 
That means the living things like rodents, lizards, and other birds. Now, if you look directly behind us, that big white animal with the long curved horns is a scimitar horned oryx. Scimitar horned oryx are carrion birds. Uh, scimitar horned oryx are extinct in the wild. They were wiped out by poachers for their meat. And now there's less than 200 of them left in the whole world. All of which live on reserves like this one. As a matter of fact, most of the animals you saw here today were either threatened or some level of endangered. And if something isn't done and soon, animals like the black rhino and the painted dog could be extinct within the next few years. But don't despair. There is still a lot being done to try and save these animals before it's too late. Here at the Disney Wildlife wow. Conservation Fund, we're trying to save populations of elephant, rhino, cheetah, giraffe, and many more. If you'd like to donate to the Disney Wildlife Conservation Fund, you can make a donation at any merchandise location you encounter here today. And Disney will match your donation. So if you give a dollar, Disney gives a dollar, and so on. It's entirely non-profit, so 100% of the proceeds go directly to helping these animals. Now, if you'd like to see some more animals here in the neighborhood today, be sure to stop by Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail, located right by our exit. You can see gorilla, meerkats, hippopotamus, tropical birds, and all kinds of cool stuff. And the best part is, it's a walking trail. So you can stay and watch those animals for as long as you want, without having to worry about something like, let's say, a truck driving away before you've got a good look. Or if you'd like to join us on Kilimanjaro safaris again sometime, no two safaris are ever the same. Your driver and the animals will make sure of that. I still see new animal behaviors all the time, and I come this way a lot. You can see things like rhino rolling around in the mud, elephants squirting each other with water, or if you come by for one of our nocturnal safaris, you can even see nocturnal predators like the hyena. Or lion are a lot more active at night too, and you can see them roaring or walking around. Well, everybody, I'm going to drop you off at the loading dock where I picked you up from, just because I'm nice like that. It's just going to take us a minute to get back there. In the meantime, if you guys have any questions about anything you saw here today, you can feel free to just politely shout them out to the front. I do respond and answer questions just like a real person. <laughs> If you'd like to see a live show while you're in town today, I'd recommend stopping by Gorilla F I'd recommend stopping by the Festival of the Lion King, located right here in Harambe Village. It's a live show with song, dance, acrobatic stunts, and even fire. It's just about the top rated show here in Harambe. Shows happen every hour, on the hour, all day long. I'd recommend getting there at least 30 minutes early if you decide to go, to make sure you get a good seat. The seats do fill up fast. You guys want to hear a terrible flamingo joke? Why do flamingos stand with one leg in the air? Because if they stood with two in the air, they'd fall down. Now my favorite animal out here on the reserve is the hyena, which you can only see on our nocturnal safaris after sunset. Female hyena get a lot bigger than male hyena, 
And for this reason, the lowest ranking female still ranks higher than the highest ranking male in their hierarchy. Hyena have extremely powerful jaws, capable of cracking bone to get at the marrow within. Now, hyena are capable of hunting alone. Contrary to popular belief, they're not just scavengers. And as a clan, they can take down large prey, even like wildebeest or zebra. The hyena are neither cats nor dogs. They actually belong to their own separate family group called Hyena Day. And the only animal in Hyena Day is the hyena. Does anybody know why a lion roars? Well, contrary to popular belief, lions are not roaring to scare other animals because what sense would that make? Why would a predator want to scare away its own food source? Lion actually roar to communicate with far-ranging members of their tribe. Like I said, lions roar can be heard at five miles away. So if lioness are out hunting and the male lion needs to communicate with them, he can roar and they'll be able to hear it from across the savanna. Safari! Yay! For those of you that couldn't see it, there was a bunch of plastic animals shoved in a hole in the wall. <laughs> Alright everybody, here's the awkward part. Because we're about to pass two loading docks, but I'm not picking them up, and I'm not dropping you guys off. So we're all gonna do our best to avoid eye contact. <laughs> Don't make it weird. Feel free to look left at these plants, or at a park map, or your cell phone. Just don't look right. <laughs> Speaking of which, these animals on the loading dock are humans. The average human stands about five to six feet tall, and a baby human will typically remain with its parents until its mid-forties. <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, look left. On our left, these are plants. <laughs> plants are gray.